Hello friends, largest accomplishment in life is owning dozens of mugs here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on behalf of Dota Alchemy, in which we're going to be talking about the big fat man himself, Pudge. And not only Pudge, we're going to be talking about mid lane Pudge, by virtue of taking a look at a replay where I played mid lane Pudge recently, and I feel like I can kind of go over things and explain uh, what I do every game to win with this hero. So. Uh, this hero is something that I like to pick generally when I'm the highest MMR player on my team, which occasionally happens, and the reason that I like to do that is because this hero has a lot of control over the game, very similar to like an Ember Spirit, you do uh, very well in the lane, it's heavily skill based, and you win all of the other lanes by essentially rotating and you get kills. So this hero is very good at controlling games if that's what you're looking for in the mid lane. It's not a meme, it's actually very good and probably going to get nerfed. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So first things first, uh, what I start with is a Quelling Blade, Stout Shield, of course these are mandatory for just securing CS and not taking a lot of damage. Uh, one Iron Branch so that with my pooled Tango I can consume that and uh, get double the regen, it's also some nice stats. Then I built into a Gauntlets of Strength which will eventually build into Bracers and I actually go for two Bracers first just because you get them so quickly that it helps you just get every single CS in the mid lane. You don't really need boots because the mid lane is so small, like, I mean look at this distance, like how you don't need boots to run between here and there but uh, I go for boots as a uh, third item choice after two Bracers because that's kind of the point where you get some levels in Rot, you can pick up a Rune and possibly go for a rotation. So uh, when you're mid lane Pudge and you can get a kill like this with Rot, you can skill Rot and it's perfectly acceptable. Just because, very similar to what I was saying about how this mid lane is just so small, there's very little threat of the enemy team bullying you, especially when it's an Ember Spirit that I'm laning against. But there's very little threat of the enemy team bullying you too much that you're going to get punished for not going Flush Heap first. In a side lane, if they see that you have Rot, they can just beat the living shit out of you, and it's it's kind of awful, because they can you know chase you from here to here, and, and know that if they just take away all of your regen, even going Flush Heap at level 2, that's not going to really help you, because you're going to be constantly low HP. But in the mid lane, there's very little to worry about. And getting a kill, of course, is very nice. And then what I do with the ward, which I beg my supports for, I place the ward scouting the bot rune. Like I said in the intro, this hero is excellent at rotating out of the middle lane. In fact, that's kind of how you want to play it. You want to push the lane in with rot uh, around the, you know, every two minute mark, look to pick up a rune, and then go rotate somewhere and get a kill. Uh, so this ward right here, it shows the bot rune which is excellent. Uh, it helps a little bit in this lane for my team, but most importantly, it shows the bot rune. And the top rune, it's so close to the mid lane that I can just walk up and see if it's there. So it's very easy for me to just check both runes at once by pushing the lane, walking up here. It either spawns here, it spawns here, and then that's when I make my rotation. So when it comes to actually laning, there are a few things that I want to briefly mention. Uh, thing number one, you need to be very mindful of range creep CS because this hero is very slow and doesn't have any way of from ranged uh, trying to get range creep CS. And considering they give so much more gold and experience than melee creeps, and they're very easy to deny, and Pudge has, you know, 72 base damage as well as a Quelling Blade, it is absolutely unacceptable to ever lose a range creep. So when something like this happens, which it, you know, commonly does in the mid lane, you want to very preemptively walk over and get that range creep. You can last hit it from half HP, so it's it's quite easy. And then you walk back, and hopefully you get the deny as well, but, I mean, against a good player, it's going to be quite difficult. And speaking of good players, if you're against a good player, when you walk over to get the range creep CS, they're going to do damage to you. But that's fine, because we have Flesh Heap. So you that, that that's why this hero is an effective mid laner, because you can't really trade with him at all. It's like a timber saw. Uh, so the second thing that I want to mention is once you have Flush Heap and Rot to work with, you want to make sure that you are bullying the living crap out of the person that you're laning against. This ability, it gives you regen. You basically have a free tango going at all points. That does not matter if you are sitting at full HP. It's not like a strength bonus or something like that. It is, it's HP regen, so you need to actually be at 
uh, low HP for it to work. So constantly right click, take creep aggro if you have to, uh, constantly use the rot. And that's why rot is one of the, um, that's why people go for uh, one point on rot, two points in flesh heap. It's because rot's not really about killing at this point. Rot is just about, hey, I'm doing damage to you, I'm doing damage to me, but I heal and you don't. That, that's what rot is about. And when it comes to denying, the way that I try to do it is very preemptively go for the deny. And the reason that I do that is because generally when you're playing in the mid lane, you're gonna be against a hero who has a way of securing CS in terms of a spell, or they're gonna be a melee hero who has a quelling blade. It's quite hard to deny if you, if you just try to wait for the exact same timing that they do. So what I do is I just go really early and hopefully get the deny. Sometimes you can time it where they hit early and they actually set you up for the deny, which is great. That happens a lot. But other times you just mess up their last hit. And that is that is you know quite quite fine. Like in either of those cases, you're happy you're gonna be winning uh, the CS battle generally when it comes to denies. So just to give you some closure of what happened in this game, uh, basically, yeah, I ran at him with Rot, just trying to harass. He got low enough that I felt like if I skilled Hook at level 4, which is not common, usually you go second point in Rot, that I could kill him. I do. He buys back because Rage, uh, and I use the salve. Uh, then he comes mid. I feed. The reason I was very aggressive here is because I sent out a salve. I was like, you know, no way that I can die here. After this, I push out the lane, get level 2 in Rot. I've seen some people go three points in flesh heat, but I find that it's very hard to get kills with level one rot. Uh, I pick up a DD after pushing out the wave, and because I have a DD, he knows that he can't lane against me. If he walks up, I'm gonna do 200 damage to him, so I just get every single last hit, every single deny, and at this point, I essentially start the rotation of uh, pushing out the lane with rot as much as I can, picking up runes, and going for kills. So. This kill, uh, this this sort of thing on embers and pudges, it's pretty nice because you set your team up to have good games. You keep your snowball going. I, you know, I'm getting flesh heap stacks, which is great. Get two kills, and then you can give somebody who needs your lane the lane. Because really when it comes to Dota, fuck rolls. There are certain heroes that want to fight at certain points. Pudge and Ember, they want to fight. Naga doesn't want to fight. Somebody like a Warlock who's level 4 doesn't want to fight. Those are the heroes that you give the mid lane. And they can get all of that juicy experience and farm. And guess what? You're still getting juicy experience and farm because you're fighting. You're getting kills. So at a certain point on Pudge, it's usually between 5 to 7 minutes in the mid lane. You don't want to go mid anymore. You're really tanky. You want to get kills. Somebody on your team wants to take the mid lane. And you basically need to go act like a uh, Venomancer, Necrophos, or Timbersaw somewhere. And those heroes, people refer to them as cancerous heroes. People refer to them as dead heroes, as BSJ would say. But basically, these heroes are borderline unkillable. So what do they do? There are two things that they do. Uh, either they go to the dead lane which is the place where it's just most dangerous for your team and then your entire team goes somewhere else and just doesn't doesn't deal with you and then because you do that you have four people on one side of the map farming and then the enemy team doesn't want to go to you because if they do they have to commit so much to killing you that they just they aren't getting enough for that you can go there, you can go to dead lane, or you can essentially uh, go push objectives with your team and act as a frontliner. This is the difference between a core pudge, a mid pudge uh, especially, and a support pudge, is that you're not this hero hiding in the trees waiting to get hooks. You're a frontliner, you're a tank, you want to play the perimeter of the zone that your team is occupying and act as a bodyguard for your team. So in this situation, I walk up to the bot lane, specifically because there's a siege creep, and Pudge is not a tower pusher, but just taking a fight around this tower will eventually secure it. And at the very least, honestly, the objective doesn't even matter. What matters is that because there's a siege creep here, and because I'm putting my presence here, and there's a, an Earthshaker backing me up, because of this, this is pressuring the enemy team. They have to respond to it. They don't feel safe down here. So this is something that is securing us farm on the map. And even if we didn't get any kill there, you'd see that the gold lead would go up just because this, this position for our team to be in is uh, relatively good. So I go for generally uh, Vanguard or Hood into Blink Dagger. Sometimes I'll go for... Um, Vanguard, Hood, uh, and then Blink Dagger if there's a lot of magic and physical damage, especially if I don't feel like I need the Blink. I don't need to get on top of anybody. If I feel like um, I can just 
essentially use my body as a way to get into the fight where people go on me and then that's how I get dismembers and hooks off. And you can see that they're trading because they don't want to fight. And that is exactly what happens when good players are playing against dead heroes, that they ignore it. And uh, if you're not doing this on Pudge, and there are no other heroes that can run around and take objectives like this, no objectives will be taken. You have to be the hero that's like, all right, guys, go, go, go. Let's go fight. And if you fall off, yeah, it does kind of suck. Then you go back into the supporty role. But generally, this hero, when played in the mid lane or in the off lane role, you get enough farm that you can just constantly front line in. Now that we've got the bot tower, that area is safe for my team. So I walk up the to top because nobody else on my team can go there. And that's when I'm playing the dead lane. So I couldn't find a clip from the other replay where I played the dead lane uh, sort of play style, which is the second way that you play Pudge, and usually you rotate between sometimes playing the dead lane, sometimes you're playing the frontliner for your team, and it really just depends on uh, what you feel is good in the game. Sometimes you don't want to just go and fight at tower so you can do this. Uh, sometimes the lane needs to be pushed out and you're the only one that can do this. There's a lot of situations where you'd want to switch between these sort of play styles, but the way that you play the dead lane uh, is you you know run up to the place where the enemy team is uh, currently occupying, which in this case and in most cases is the safe lane at you know 15 minutes into the game. So you can see the terror blade is here, and then you push out one wave, and you go do something else. Usually you jungle, you take bounties. Um, this is uh, quoting Newsham, who plays a lot of core pudge as well. He says. You have to earn your jungle farm. So the way that you earn your jungle farm is you push out a lane, so that way you're doing the objective of pushing a lane into the enemy team, they have to deal with it, you go jungle. You shove out a lane, so they have to shove it back, you jungle. You shove out a lane, you jungle, and then you do this until you get super duper farmed. So I want to quickly show you what the kind of ideal way to fight with Pudge is. Uh, you just run in, act like an idiot, maybe hook somebody, maybe blink in. And then this happens. The enemy team is like, go on this guy. He's out of position. He's out of position. And then you scream at your team. Hey, guys, I'm tanky. I'm tanky. I'm tanky. Come back me up. Come back me up. The enemy team is going to put themselves out of position. And usually they do because in order to kill somebody, you need to reveal yourself and you need to move, um, you know, gather around that person. And that sets up for your team to take uh, really good fights such as this. And I'm not saying this to make excuses for dying. I'm saying this because I've seen Brax, for example, play Pudge and win with Pudge, and he ends the game like 6 and 12. This hero, honestly, ideally, has a good amount of deaths. This hero takes a lot of damage. If you are not dying on core Pudge, and you are not taking a shitload of damage on core Pudge, you are doing it wrong. This hero is a timber saw. The way that he wins games, it is all about the baits, and then sometimes you hit a cool hook. But it's mostly about the baits. It's the fact that you are so goddamn tanky with very few items. So I want to quickly cover itemization on Core Pudge here at the end. Uh, core item, phase boots, the armor from these, absolutely amazing. These basically double your effective HP. No other boots will suffice on Pudge. Then you go for one or two tanky items, depending on how much you need the initiation of the blink. So if there's a hero you really need to initiate on, on the enemy team, and you feel like you're the only hero that does it, in this game I wasn't because I have a Wraith King and I have a Magnus, then you can go for a Blink after Vanguard or a Blink after Hood. Go for Hood first if there's a lot of magic damage, go for Vanguard first. In all other cases, if there's any physical, lots of physical damage, which everybody just right clicks, so usually Vanguard first is going to be good. You can go for Vanguard into Hood if you just want to be the tanky frontliner and you don't need the Blink, but almost always after you go for the two tanky items, you build into a Blink Dagger. Then you go for Crimson Guard, then you go for Pipe, generally unless you feel like you don't need it at that point in the game. And after that, your build is almost complete. You basically go for luxury items such as uh, Shiva's Guard, such as Sheepstick, BKB is good, Aghanim Scepter is pretty good, Radiance is even really good if you don't need anything else and you want to be more of a late game scaling hero. You can even go Radiance after Vanguard if you really want to be a late game scaling hero. Let's say you're against an Naga Siren and you have nobody to clear illusions, well that can be your job on Pudge. You can go Shiva's Radiance after Vanguard and that is quite good. This hero basically has three core, four core items, Phase Boots, Blink, Crimson, Pipe, after that whatever you want. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in another video.